From the beginning of the tribunal's inception, it was understood that the courtroom proceedings would be recorded and broadcast throughout the world. Creating an audiovisual record of the proceedings is included in the rules and procedures of the tribunal, with the view to ensure the long-term preservation of these historic trials. The challenge was to create a full, accurate, and timely representation of the courtroom proceedings whilst balancing the need for the public to see justice proceed and at the same time protect witnesses and confidential information throughout the trial process. Although early efforts were made to build on innovations from other national institutions, this was the first time such a complex recording requirement would be needed. The audiovisual unit was tasked with video recording the entirety of the proceedings without interference, ensuring that four languages of audio were recorded simultaneously, that electronic protection measures were implemented, video evidence could be presented, and remote witness testimony was possible, with interpretation. In the ultimate effort to capture everything in the courtroom, each individual camera was also recorded until it was determined that the master recordings were consistent and complete without them. One of the most important tools we have to assist with public access of our recordings is the implementation of a delay system. This 30-minute delay allows for the redaction of any information that could compromise the protection of witnesses or that the trial chamber deems confidential. The delay system automatically removes private and closed sessions of testimony as well and in turn creates a public version record of the proceedings within 30 minutes of the live trial. The technology we use in the courtrooms today has radically improved the way we can record, preserve, and provide public access from the antiquated technology that was available for purchase back in 1994. Formats have improved from VHS to digital DV cam and from individual cassette tapes to four-channel CD-ROM recordings. Duplication facilities were also set up to assist in the preparation of evidence for presentation at trial. Limitations of equipment in the early days restricted us from high-speed video dubbing or duplicating multiple copies at once. However, as technology evolved, all world standards and most current formats were available and configured to our system. As the digital age emerged in the 21st century, the primary challenge was to maintain continuity in the quality of our recordings as we sought to upgrade each of our three courtrooms separately using the latest available equipment each time. And many of the newer components and software upgrades that were required had to be modified by the technicians in order to successfully integrate them into our existing infrastructure. The robotic system used to operate all six cameras became more accurate and easier to handle. And the new digital audio system was more automated, which included the incorporation of a built-in voice distortion signal. Other changes to the visual look of our recordings were made to increase the protection of witnesses and enhance the record. Facial distortion was extended to cover the full frame of the image as it was determined that certain witnesses may only have one suit or one ring or one bracelet and these could be identifying features beyond the edges of the distortion. Split screens showing two participants sliced together in one frame also became an unacceptable shot since it was understood that we are providing a raw feed of the final cut and broadcasters would need to rely on the full-frame images of each of the participants without effect. The quality of our evidence presentation improved after the upgrade from analog to digital signal distribution, and the tribunal's migration from paper evidence presentation to a full digital electronic evidence format. The increased image resolution and timeliness of presentation provides greater clarity and accuracy to the audiovisual record. Today, in the courtroom, we can show maps or documents to a witness via a smart board, 
an electronic screen that witnesses can draw on which could then be saved as an official exhibit. Advances in technology have not only improved the quality of our recordings, but has contributed to increased accuracy, timeliness, and public access. A new file-based recording system has been recently put in place, capturing a high-quality preservation and lower-quality public access file of all our recordings. These files will be automatically routed to the Judicial Records Unit at the end of each day's trial for processing. Our existing recorded material will also be digitized into the same file formats with the view of creating a consistent record, improving delivery and public access. There have been many lessons learned from the processes initially developed in preserving the record years ago. Chain of custody procedures have improved, the director now completes a tape count form that details the precise amount of recorded material used, and locked boxes for the material were installed within the AV area for retrieval by authorized judicial records personnel. Even our recording processes have improved from the early day recordings. Tapes were originally left to record until they reached their full two-hour length and usually were changed live mid-session. A few years later, procedures were put in place to ensure all tapes were changed each break, after each session, regardless of their length. This has made public access more efficient and accountable and has increased the totality of our record. The AV director producing the feed is also tasked with monitoring all aspects of the production in order to help preserve the record. Human error and technical fault can create unexpected challenges that affect content during the course of a trial day. Here are some examples. Witnesses who are inexperienced with audiovisual facilities need to be reminded to lean away from the microphone when speaking, or else their voice becomes overmodulated and hard to understand. Speaking the same language as the witness can also create an imperfect record if the witness and speaker don't pause between question and answer so as to give time for the interpretation to finish. Trial chambers have surprised the courtroom participants by walking into the courtroom without advance notice, leaving directors to scramble to ensure the recording is in place. Microphones left open while a voice-distorted witness is speaking can result in the true voice of the witness being recorded. The directors vigilantly monitor the microphone system during these periods and assist if necessary. Interpreters using the wrong language input or forget to turn their microphone on can lead to confusion and an incomplete record if not identified and corrected. Recording practices are also revised in the event of any altercations in the courtroom, so as to minimize disturbance on the record and preserve the dignity and decorum of the courtroom proceedings. Even power failures resulting in mid-session courtroom changes are the kinds of situations that directors have to face at one time or another. In all these cases, preserving the content is paramount and it is now policy to document any change made to the day's recordings so that those tasked with the preparation of the tapes for public access will be provided with all possible anomalies for future management of this material. This tribunal has been a groundbreaking institution in terms of how the technical infrastructure for our courtroom operation records the complexity of our courtroom trials and we have been visited by several international judicial institutions, like the International Criminal Court and the Special Tribunal for Lebanon, as well as the National Courts of Bosnia, Canada, and the Netherlands, all in order to gather information on how to integrate our infrastructure into their courtroom. At the end of the day, the audiovisual recordings provide one of the most open windows in which to see justice proceed and are a visual culmination of all the hard work carried out by this tribunal.